Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about next experiment of amphibian physiology that is effect of increasing frequency of stimulation, right? So here we'll be giving many stimulation and we'll see and since we are giving many stimulus, so we'll call it as stimuli, right? Okay, on skeletal muscle contraction or SMT. Fine, you can also uh, find a name for this experiment that is genesis of tetanus. Fine. Okay, so we have seen, if you remember, we have seen in one video, uh, effect of two successive stimuli. So, if we give second stimulus, what happens uh, to the graph of first stimulus? Like, one stimulation is over or in between that, we give second stimulation. What was the effect? So, uh, we came to know that during latent period, what was the response? During contraction period, during relaxation period, what was the response, right? So here the same concept basically will try to elaborate further. If we further increase the number of stimulation instead of 2, uh, we give many stimulation say 5 to 40 per second. So what is going to happen? So here we'll be talking about that. Okay. So this experiment is genesis of tetanus. Why we'll talk about later. So this is the graph which you can get in the muscle physiology here. So basically, you can see there are stimulus marker below and there are graph which are visible. Uh, so the first thing obviously we always talk about the observation part. So you can see there are four segments which we'll talk about every time separately. So uh, you can see the number of frequency if we see in all four, it varies basically. It is increasing this side. So uh, the, for example here, the say five stimulation was given. So there were five response and uh, further responses if we further increase the stimulation. So basically what happens then we increase the stimulus again there is a response and we further increase the stimulus the response varies. So uh, the basic idea try to interpret your uh, observation uh, just see what is the difference between these two. So you, uh, my observation is uh, the relaxation is approx complete in every graph. Here my observation is relaxation is approx half complete in this graph, right? And if we move further, we increase the stimulation, the, you can see the relaxation is negligible and at last there is no relaxation. Can you see this? I think you are able to observe this thing, right? So uh, this is the major observation which we can see. Now we'll, we will label these all a uh, four graph and uh, you can see, let us just concentrate on first one. So we, if we give 5 to 10 roughly frequencies, uh, then what happens is, as you can see, there is one graph, uh, then second simple muscle twitch, third simple muscle twitch, and you can see the amplitude keeps on increasing for few contractions. So uh, we know what is this effect, right? This is in cardiac muscle, this is staircase phenomena. In skeletal muscle, we call it beneficial effect, right? So this is beneficial effect only, right? We know that. So, the, the author labeled, the, the experimental uh, scientist, they basically label it trepe. So, what is trepe basically? Trepe or staircase phenomena, when frequency of stimulation is such that the successive stimuli fall during relaxation period. So, the since this is falling in relaxation period or late relaxation period, this muscle is basically able to relax. So uh, what is observation? There is increase in tension for few contraction and then the contraction, the tension is uniform. So as you can see the increase in contraction and then there is uniform contraction or force of contraction. Fine. So this is force or amplitude in term of these two words you can explain. So this phenomena where few co the contractions are such that the amplitude increase subsequently for few contraction and then it become uniform and the muscle is able to relax that is called trepe. Okay. Or we can call it as staircase phenomena. Is this clear to you all? Okay. Then next is you can see this is clonus where we increase further 10 to 15 stimuli and you can see that obviously you will observe some beneficial effect at starting of every graph and then you can see there is uniform amplitude but you can see that the muscle is not able to relax okay so this phenomena is called clonus so clonus where the stimulation of frequency is such that 
in uh, the basically stimuli the successive stimuli fall during mid relaxation phase or early relaxation phase the muscle relaxes but it's not completely relaxing it's undergo again because of stimulation it undergo again in contraction phase the stimulation is such that it falls in early relaxation phase so muscle undergo again contraction okay so this is clonus coming to the next one which is if we increase the frequency further i think you are able to interpret this point if increase the frequency obviously the every second contraction falls earlier than the previous one right that's why the response varies here the relaxation keeps on reducing fine next is the uh, if we increase further the stimulation you can see the relaxation further reduces and here the, there is a uh, minor episodes of relaxation okay so and at last if increase further there is no relaxation so tetanus is nothing but a sustained contraction without relaxation okay so uh, how to basically define this incomplete and complete tetanus so with increase in frequency the stimulus falls during contraction phase so it's falling now on early phases further in contraction phase right so activation of contractile mechanism occur now if you should think here that if uh, the stimulus is falling in contraction phase what that mean the relaxation has not started the contraction phase in contraction phase there is calcium in cytoplasm and you are stimulating it again right so the contractile mechanism is always uh, already active so the activation of contractile mechanism occurs again repeatedly before any relaxation occur that's why there is no relaxation individual responses they fuse into one continuous contraction as you can see in the graph that there is sustained contraction so this sustained contraction is called tetanus okay there is no relaxation only contraction is occurring so every contraction keep on submitting with each other they fuse with each other and there is a line at last that is called sustained contraction or tetanus so tetanus is also two type incomplete tetanus where you can see some episode of relaxation and complete tetanus when there is no relaxation at all so that is your tetanus okay as you can see there there are first few contraction you can see the beneficial effect and since this is incomplete tetanus means you we will get some relaxation episodes and in complete tetanus there is no relaxation at all there is a straight line sustained contraction you can also calculate tetanizing frequency that is for every muscle which at which frequency the muscle will undergo tetanus right so there is a formula for this one by contraction period say contraction period of a muscle we recorded simple muscle twitch of that muscle and we found the contraction period of 10 millisecond so what is tetanizing frequency it is 1 second by uh, 10 millisecond so we have to convert it into millisecond so 1 second will be 1000 millisecond so at 100 frequency per second if we give to that muscle the muscle surely undergo tetanus so we can calculate tetanizing frequency for every muscle this way okay so uh, this experiment is also applied to our body that's that is applied physiology we should know why we are reading this experiment what is relevance to our physiology or uh, our body mechanisms so you can uh, you should will be able to understand the contractures contractures are nothing but sustained contraction of muscle and uh, it can be after death rigor mortis will call them because of atp depletion Uh, we are able to uh, understand the concept of slow and fast muscles uh, that is uh, say i muscles are fast muscles which have uh, if if the muscles are fast that means the phases will be less the contraction phase will be less right and if phase is less means uh, they will have high retinizing frequency okay and if the muscle is slow that means the phase will be wide that means contraction phase will be more or less retinizing frequency so the slow muscles which are for example back muscle that should have less tetanizing frequency that means it should have uh, it should undergo tetanus sustained contraction to maintain posture okay so all postural muscles are that of 
slow muscle type having low tetanizing frequency because we need tetanus there and in fast muscle we don't need fatigue we don't need tetanus that's why the tetanizing frequency is less okay so uh, uh, sorry high tetanizing frequency is high fast muscle the uh, the contraction phase is less okay so uh, that's why we we are able to understand the concept of posture maintenance muscles and even seizure seizures are because of uh, any tumor or any injury or brain nerve stimulation increases because of that we have multiple seizures clonus seizures okay uh, many type of seizures you can get so we are able to understand these concept because of this experiment only so we are done with the uh, experiment of genesis of tetanus if you have any query you can comment below thanks for watching bye bye happy learning